Okay, I think. Oh, we are active. All. all right. Uh, welcome, everybody. A uh, good afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the lunch. If you didn't, it's not our fault, so don't put in the review. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that. Um, so, uh, you know, sessions after lunch is always a challenge to keep you guys entertained and make sure that you don't uh, fall into sleep. Yeah, and uh, my name is Ricardo, and uh, together with... Hi, I'm Filippo. Filippo, we will be talking uh, about uh, how you go uh, and act at uh, solutions that uh, expands uh, Azure and Azure Stack. So that's, uh, that's the plan for the, the next hour. All right, take it away. You see, he, he just came for the introductions and the selfie. <laughs> Crazy, right? No. You, that's what you do when you look good, you know? All right, all right. So, uh, you know, I think that, question, how many of you actually have hands-on experience with Azure Stack? Okay. So for those that did not raise your hand, uh, 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 how many of you actually like have no idea of what of what Azure Stack is? Okay. So in the next 73 minutes, 32 seconds, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Azure Stack is, uh, the role that Azure Stack plays, and how we can build solutions on that. For those of you that already use Azure Stack. Uh, hopefully, uh, the concepts I will bring to you and some of the demos are things that you can actually take home and, and start working. For those of you that did not raise your hand on uh, neither of the questions, I assume you is going to stay here and, and watch the presentation, so I'll do my best to, to provide you insights as well. All right, guys. One thing you have to keep in mind is Azure Stack is about Azure. It's Azure that you run on your data center. Okay. So, with that said, let's look at uh, you know some of the key uh, 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 tenants uh, uh, of Azure. Azure provides you uh, a broad reach across the globe, very productive uh, uh, a set of services. Uh, you uh, can leverage uh, Azure uh, to be, uh, to not only uh, you know, uh, create uh, your applications, but also make your applications integrate with uh, all the Microsoft services. We talk a lot about the Microsoft Graph, uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, yesterday and today, which means that you can really use the cloud as you know that brain of your applications, with the advantage of having a broad reach uh, across the globe. Azure is trusted. Uh, and secure, which means that you have a very solid basis uh, to start uh, uh, creating your applications. Another very important uh, uh, aspect uh, of uh, Azure is really uh, Azure is hybrid. So there are many flavors of uh, Azure, uh, and when I say flavors, that is the public Azure that you hit when you go to portal.azure.com. Uh, there is government Azure, uh, there is Azure in uh, 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 some specific geographies, and there is that Azure that you take to your data center, which is called uh, Azure Stack. Uh, all those different flavors of Azure, they share some common tenants. A identity platform that is uh, uh, shared uh, across uh, Azure, and that, are, that can also be used across other uh, Microsoft uh, uh, services. Also share a unified uh, de development experience with a great support of tooling. All the tools that you are used to use and you love to use, uh, either Microsoft tools or open source tools, provides a uh, uh, the ability for you to develop in pretty much any of the major existing languages and IDEs today, so it really provides a great uh, development experience. And also, uh, a, uh, a secure uh, infrastructure for your applications uh, and uh, uh, a way for you to manage your resources 
from a integrate point, either from the Azure portal or uh, through the diverse set of APIs uh, that Azure uh, uh, provides. And that's true for public Azure and Azure Stack. So with that said, the combination of Azure Stack and Azure provides you a real hybrid capability. And uh, when we start looking at the specifics of Azure of Azure Stack, the fact that we have, that, that we share uh, Azure Resource Manager, Azure Resource Manager, it is the, um, the foundation of the resource life cycle in Azure. So Azure Resource Manager uh, controls uh, uh, the life cycle of your resources, right? The same, uh, absolutely the same uh, Azure Resource Manager that you encounter in uh, public Azure is the Azure Resource Manager that, that you encounter in Azure Stack and the other Azure Clouds, which means that your templates and scripts, uh, they can um, uh, be authored in a way uh, that the final location of your artifact being a VM or a website or a serverless uh, uh, function uh, is pretty much a configuration uh, of your uh, deployment automation. And at the key, uh, at the heart of this is really the consistency. And is the consistency between uh, the two, uh, Azure and Azure Stack, that allows you uh, to basically choose where to put your, uh, your artifacts on. And uh, consistency is something that I'm going to talk uh, a lot during this uh, talk. Uh, and it, it, is, it is the foundation for you to create hybrid apps. Uh, because when you do have a level of consistency between uh, the, different cloud, the, the, the different clouds, uh, you can then uh, create your applications in a way that uh, part of your data may reside on-prem, for example, with Azure Stack. Uh, and then for scale, you maybe use Azure. Uh, it allows scenarios like uh, AI in the edge, uh, artificial intelligence on the edge, where you, you know, train your models at scale in uh, the public cloud, uh, develop and train your models in the public cloud, and then score those models uh, in the location where the action happens uh, with Azure Stack. And, and I think you know, the best way uh, to show this is for a, a quick demo, right? Uh, I do have 78 slides. <laughs> no, I don't. Can you imagine 78 slides with a Brazilian accent and an Italian accent coming soon? No. All right. Is there any Brazilian? I'm Brazilian, so is there any Brazilian here? No? Okay. I'm not going to ask if there are Italians. You can ask that later. All right, so uh, consistency. What I have here, uh, I'm connected to one of my um, uh, demo environments, and you are looking at the uh, Azure portal uh, in Azure Stack. And I say Azure portal because, again, if, if you look at the portal in Azure Stack, and we switch to Azure, Really, the clue that you have that you are in Azure or Azure Stack is the logo, right? The logo on the top corner. Uh, and also, you can confirm that by the URL, all right? So this is Azure, and uh, this is uh, Azure Stack. All right, not, not, not super exciting, right? I mean, you kind of obvious. But uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, this very subtle uh, 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 consistency uh, uh, factors really allows you to focus on designing your apps, other than learning specific languages or tools, or worse than that, having different code bases, right? In the past, what would happen is if you were targeting, if you were creating a solution to the public cloud, it would be one co code base, a solution to uh, run on your data center would be a different code base. Indeed, with Azure Stack, we bring Azure, including Azure Resource Manager, the tooling to your data center. Great. We look at the portal, and I could go through the portal experience, but I will save you from that. You can try yourself or the, the ones here that you not try yet. Uh, so this is only uh, uh, one uh, uh, level of uh, consistency. 
So let's take a look at uh, what that means for uh, uh, an application uh, 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 developer. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, right now we are looking at my Azure Stack portal and uh, let me look at my resource groups here. I have a few resource groups, uh, five. And uh, what I like to do is I like to switch to PowerShell. And uh, I won't go into much details of what this uh, particular script does. But uh, basically, uh, if you look at all the way to the end of the script here, there is a deployment call. Right? A new Azure RM resource group deployment. My goal here is not to teach you PowerShell or uh, Azure SDK for PowerShell. Uh, it's just to highlight the key concept which you, inter you interface with uh, Azure and Azure Stack through the same SDK, right? So if you are doing a resource group deployment and you use PowerShell, you do uh, a new Azure RM resource group great uh, deployment. And what's happening here? Uh, it's uh, 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 invoking a template that is uh, in GitHub uh, and uh, performing the deployment. This is a very simple template, it's part of the quick starts, and it just creates a VM. All right, I won't go into the specifics of the template here. So what I like to do is, you know, we'll go ahead, take a look at this code here, and uh, I'll set a breakpoint exactly where uh, the uh, subscription uh, where I, I get my, my subscription. And you can see the com command, uh, get Azure RM subscription, great. So what I will do now is, let me double check up here. You notice I just set a handy uh, 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 variable, says deploy to stack, which can be either true or false. In this case, I wanna deploy this template to Azure Stack. And by the way, how you would do this different uh, folks have different programming styles, right? Uh, this is just the way uh, uh, I structure my code, but bottom line is I have a variable that, control, that says whether or not I'm targeting Azure or Azure Stack, and the difference, you know, if we take a, a, a close look at the code, is that uh, what I would do if I'm deploying to Azure Stack, I perform some calls that specify some uh, uh, the ARM endpoints, which are custom because Azure Stack is running on your data center, so the, the endpoints uh, are not necessarily public. Or if I'm deploying to um, Azure, the endpoints are well known, so I don't need to specify an, uh, an endpoint. The only thing uh, I go ahead and do is a uh, login Azure RM account. But keep in mind that it's the same SDK. The only really difference is the endpoints of ARM Azure Resource Manager change. So in my code, I have a provision for that. And of course, this is a PowerShell example, could be CLI. There are many other ways to do that, all right? So let's run this thing and see what happens. So I just uh, hit, hit run here. And uh, we did set a breakpoint uh, in the subscription call. So we'll go ahead and uh, do uh, a, um, uh, a step over it. And then what happens is um, we will get a subscription. So, okay, notice PowerShell is reporting that I have uh, a subscription with a given uh, subscription ID. Uh, reports the environment, in this case, Azure Stack user. And again, environment is a concept of, our, of uh, uh, the tooling, which is basically uh, whether you are, want to target the public cloud or uh, the sovereign clouds or Azure, or, or Azure Stack, you specify the endpoints. Great, so what I did, the only thing I did is I specify the endpoints for my Azure Stack. Now the output of the, the command is exactly the same, the objects are the same, because indeed the SDK is the same. Great, so what I, would, what I would do now is, I would just go ahead and let this thing run, and a new resource group was created, resource group uh, OSS CFRG278, uh, 
And uh, clearly, you see that I'm not good at naming things. If I go ahead to Azure Stack, um, you can see that a new resource group was just created. And if I go ahead and click there, uh, the status is deploying, right? So I will leave the, the, these resources to be created. And I'm going to switch to another PowerShell window, right? And uh, in this PowerShell window, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, set that variable deploy to stack equals false, which means that my code now will uh, target Azure. And I will do exactly the same thing. We will just uh, set a breakpoint here. And what's going to happen is we'll go through the same, uh, uh, um, uh, the same flow. Let me do a step over. And you can see that my environment now is Azure Cloud. And I have subscription ID, the same constructs that I had on the prior call. But guess what? The endpoints are different. Now um, my uh, uh, PowerShell environment is pointing to the public Azure. So the deployment is happening uh, in Azure with the same template. So with that said, I would just go ahead and uh, continue running this. And it will create a new resource group. The resource group is 457. Right, so let's do this. Let's go to public Azure now. And um, let's filter my uh, resources. And to make it easy, let me filter by OSS. Four fifty seven is here. I just created the status is deploying, which means that you know that deployment's going on. So why this is important? And again, super simple demo. Uh, the goal was not to uh, uh, stun you with uh, how uh, uh, easy it is to write a script to deploy something, but it's to highlight that the template is the same because ARM is the same, Azure Resource Manager is the same. The script is the same because I use one SDK, which is the PowerShell, the Azure uh, SDK for PowerShell. Uh, I could be using CLI as well, uh, or I could be using one of the SDKs for uh, languages like uh, Python, Ruby, uh, .NET, and others. The bottom line is the consistency allows you to create your resources and then uh, choose where you place uh, those resources. All right and not for consistency. So uh, let's take a look at some other concepts and how we can use this consistency to, uh, in reality, create hybrid applications. So let me switch my screen here. So again, always keep in mind the importance of Azure uh, as uh, uh, the uh, Azure Stack being an extension of Azure, right? When you use this consistency on your favor, uh, you indeed can create applications that uh, take the best out of the resources you have on-prem and at the same time uh, realize the potential of the Azure presence uh, worldwide. So, what customers have been doing uh, in terms of hybrid. And uh, we spend a considerable amount of time uh, meeting with customers all over the world uh, during the inception of Azure Stack. Uh, and with the help of those customers and customers' interview, interviews and, and requirement gatherings, gate, gate, gathering, uh, we come uh, to uh, few pillars of what a um, hybrid application would look like, right? So consistency, and I allude to consistency uh, briefly in the demo, you know, this uh, flexibility that uh, being able to create your resources 
and place uh, uh, in either clouds uh, is very, very uh, uh, helpful. Then having the ability uh, of leveraging the Azure services available on premises is also some, something that customers uh, find uh, very, very helpful. And finally, uh, all of that on uh, 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 leveraging an integrated delivery experience where customers can basically uh, get an appliance, roll out on the data center, uh, press a button, plug power uh, and networking, and then they have that mini Azure uh, to run uh, you know, the modern clouds, the same type of uh, modern uh, uh, apps, the same types of apps that they will be running in the public cloud. So with that said, if we look at uh, a little more uh, 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 drill down on those uh, scenarios, edge and disconnected. And you know, if you uh, if you were watching uh, uh, such as keynote, he did talk in two scenarios of uh, bringing Azure to the edge, bringing Azure to places like uh, ships in the middle of the sea. Um, uh, 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 oil uh, uh, drilling platforms, or, or even in scenarios where you know you have vehicles uh, uh, performing any kind of maintenance in the field, all those things. It's about running your application, developing and designing and running your applications in one model, which is the Azure model, and running those applications where uh, uh, the action, quote unquote, happens. Now, regulation uh, across the world, business um, faces uh, different types of regulations, and some regulations require you to store data in a given location, right? And uh, that can be accomplished in many different ways. But if you are designing, developing, and uh, 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 managing your applications in Azure, it's very helpful to be able to use the same model the same operation model while maintaining uh, data or artifacts where they are needed. So that's another uh, very common scenario. And finally, being able to run modern apps uh, on premises and being able to integrate those modern apps with existing systems. For example, you may have uh, factory floor systems uh, that you like to uh, integrate while designing a uh, application based on functions, on serverless computing, or API apps. So if you have Azure Stack on-prem, you can do that. Azure Stack uh, has uh, app services, for example, uh, with functions, with uh, websites, API apps, so you can design your mo modern application and uh, have that modern application uh, talking with uh, on-premise assistants. Now, with those uh, 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 three pillars, let's take a look a little bit uh, more on what uh, such uh, pillar would look like. So for example, what, what can I really do on edge and disconnected? You know, one example is uh, I can use the public cloud to do data aggregation and then uh, use the public cloud to do data collection, and then use uh, the uh, Azure Stack or many Azure Stacks uh, to perform what? Uh, AI scoring on my AI models, or do some kind of data processing and uh, keep uh, data local while uh, surfacing uh, uh, some part of the data uh, to the public cloud. So the bottom line of Edge and Disconnect is you can look at, you leverage the broad uh, Azure uh, to basically do the training of your models and the large scale data collection. Uh, and then you use Azure Stack uh, to basically treat uh, the data and the processes that need to uh, keep on-prem. And keep in mind the limited or no connectivity. Disconnect is a very, um, it's a very, uh, uh, um, I think, strong word uh, to describe. You may have interme intermittent connectivity, 
What intermittent connectivity is, you may have sensors on the field, and sometimes those sensors have connectivity, sometimes those sensors don't have connectivity, right? So then uh, you can uh, take a scenario like that where you use Azure Stack to basically maintain uh, 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 that data while connectivity doesn't exist, and when connectivity is established, you can, uh, uh, you can integrate with systems uh, uh, in the public cloud. So that's one example uh, of edge uh, uh, and disconnected solutions. Now, how this ties to the, ex to the demos uh, I presented earlier, where we saw the consistency. Again, uh, having the consistency between the clouds means that you can arch architect your solutions in a way that uh, you can deploy the different pieces of the application uh, where um, you really need it. All right. So, how about regulations? You know, we have a, uh, one, uh, one of, of my customers uh, does healthcare solutions uh, in a high regulated uh, geography. So uh, they uh, do require uh, that, uh, to keep data uh, on premise uh, and in specific countries. So how can they use Azure Stack for that? Again, uh, they can store the PII data uh, in Azure Stack using things like the capabilities we have for blob, tables, queues, also SQL and MySQL resource providers. And then uh, for the data that is not required on-prem, uh, they can uh, leverage uh, Azure Stack for the modeling uh, of big data. Uh, and the other thing that surfaces in this kind of example is that not only uh, you can uh, go to the public cloud uh, to uh, do uh, big data modeling, AI, as I mentioned, as I had mentioned before, but you can also go to the uh, public cloud for uh, scenarios like cloud bursts. So you keep your data on-prems, on -prem, but you are able to uh, leverage the cloud uh, to burst some of the capabilities. So this is uh, some of the examples uh, of use cases uh, we encountered uh, when we uh, talk with uh, uh, different customers. So I think that the best way for us to um, explore that is looking at, the, at a demo, right? So I was thinking on different ways we could do a hybrid solution. And, um, and that reminded me this morning of another customer. Uh, this customer, uh, they have to ingest a large volume of files in different ingress points all over the world. Now those files end up uh, being part of the information of those files end up being having to be processed on-prem. By the way, they do large scale printing not the, the type of printing you do uh, at home, but the, really the large scale printing, which requires some uh, football size uh, infrastructure. So how to solve the problem of uh, easily ingest documents from all over and then uh, basically uh, at, at, at some point in uh, bringing those, those, uh, that data on-prem with the same programming model. Uh, so that's the challenge that I, uh, I it reminded me this morning, and uh, I like uh, to walk you through that. So let's uh, switch to the demo environment. All right, uh, okay. So I like to concentrate, o concentrate on Azure Stack. So let's uh, switch my screen here, great. So first of all, if you, are a, uh, if you are developing a hybrid solution or you are about to develop, you know, the first uh, thing you ask is, uh, what is available uh, for me to use? Because personally, I try to write uh, the least amount of code that I can. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, particular uh, Azure Stack environment and see what type of capabilities uh, I have available. All right, 
So uh, if I look at my resource groups, actually there are different ways I can do that. So, so let, let's go to the marketplace. And uh, you know, let's take a look here. Do I have a SQL server? Uh, yes, I can create a SQL database. Um, I can also create a MySQL database if I want. So basically, uh, these, two, uh, two, these are two of our resource providers, SQL and MySQL. Uh, another uh, uh, option that I have is, uh, let's say I want to create a function. Here uh, I have a function app, and it's exactly the same function app uh, that you are used to uh, in uh, Azure, because it's uh, uh, the same uh, resource provider that uh, exists in Azure. So web apps, function apps, it's all there, API apps, etc. Awesome. There are some other things here that, uh, if I look at my marketplace, if I search again for MySQL, I can either uh, create a MySQL database uh, using the uh, MySQL resource provider, or if I want, I can create a, a MySQL VM using an, uh, uh, a marketplace item from Bitnami. Bear in mind, this marketplace item is exactly the same. Uh, it comes from Azure, so the Azure, st the Azure Stack marketplace uh, is, uh, uh, has the ability to syndicate items from Azure. So what I'm highlighting to you is the different capabilities that we have out of the box. Also, uh, you know, when we talk about hybrid um, uh, solutions, I cannot uh, uh, miss uh, one of the announcements uh, we, uh, we did uh, yesterday. So we have the uh, a, a marketplace item that creates a Kubernetes cluster uh, that's in preview that was announced, um, again, we had just announced this today, uh, I'm sorry, yesterday. And the same thing uh, for other, um, uh, uh, for other uh, technologies, right? So service fabric, it's another uh, capability that we hear all the time uh, from our customers. So we do have a marketplace item that uh, enables you to create um, service fabric clusters. Again, this was, we just announced this yesterday. Now, bear in mind, this is not the uh, service fabric resource provider, the managed service. This is not AKS, the Azure Kubernetes services, the managed service. These are marketplace items uh, that uh, creates uh, uh, those uh, 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 Kubernetes or service fabric uh, clusters for you. Uh, the key difference here is the Azure version is a fully managed service uh, in Azure Stack. It's a marketplace item that will basically automate the creation of those clusters relying on uh, IaaS infrastructure. Anyway, uh, this is just to give an idea of the current capability. So everything that I show you is a current capability. Great. So let's go back. Uh, let's not deviate from our goal. And our goal was to um, uh, ingest data in a large scale using Azure. Uh, and persist that data in, uh, uh, on a on-prem system. Great. So how do we accomplish that? So if I look at the resource groups, you know, some of the deployment, some of the, the resources I had deployed ahead of time for obvious reasons. So if I look at uh, this, um, this resource group here, I have a um, SQL database uh, that was provisioned using the the SQL resource provider. So I have a SQL database, um, an existing SQL database, which by the way, just to uh, highlight, this is what it looks like. So here I have a simply open source uh, 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 tool that uh, brings data from different databases. Uh, so what you are seeing is again, a connection to a SQL instance and, and just to show you that uh, that I have some data there. I have a table uh, with a couple of columns. Again, some abstraction is needed for this demo. So assume that you know, we are storing data on SQL Server and this data will eventually flow uh, into our on-prem system. So our end goal, again, is to ingest large, large amount of files uh, and bring this down here. Now, this SQL database is running in Azure Stack. Uh, how can we bring data to it? There are different ways. I personally love functions. Uh, serverless functions uh, basically are the, 
the, the biggest uh, bang for the bucks. Uh, it allows you to uh, create uh, processing based on many languages. In this case, uh, I create a simple function using uh, C Sharp. Uh, it allows you to either uh, have a fully uh, you know, development experience using Visual Studio and everything, compiling your code, all those things, or allows you to just write uh, uh, you know, uh, basically scripts and, and compile at runtime, which saves some time. So for the purpose of the demo, that's what I did. Uh, I create a function, uh, very straightforward, it just uh, receives an item and writes to a SQL database. I'm going to the details of the code again, very straightforward, uses the, uh, uh, the SQL client classes, and what happens is this function, when this function runs, uh, it will write a record uh, to that uh, SQL database, right? And here you see our lovely uh, uh, SQL statement. All right, and again, I'm alluding to maybe an existing uh, SQL uh, system that you are already have on-prem, something like that. So we have a function that basically, when it's called, persists data on SQL Server. Great. We have a challenge here. Actually, you have many challenges. So the first challenge is, I like to ingest data using Azure, using the global reach of Azure, okay? How can we do that? How we ingest data using Azure? There are probably like 10 different ways, right? There's one way, one of the ways. IoT Hub. IoT Hub. IoT Hub, yes. That, you know, I thought about that. But how about, let's try to do something even simple. If it's a file, what a user would probably be doing? OneDrive seems a pretty neat way to ingest files, right? And again, this is, this is not an a, a, uh, uh, architecture uh, uh, um, uh, a session in the sense of don't get this code and run in production. It's just let's be creative. So I'm going to leverage OneDrive, the scale of OneDrive to ingest files, uh, and then uh, uh, have Azure Stack, a processing Azure Stack to run every time a file happens, a file is ingesting on drive. So here's another challenge. How do we connect our function to a processing Azure? Different ways. I can think of, I will establish VPN, right? Could be one way. Uh, I could have Express Route. Yeah, that's cool, like the biggest pipe ever. All right, guys, every single server in Azure, or the majority of them, they have public endpoints, right? So let's leverage the public endpoints for the sake of this demo. So what I'm doing is, if, if you look at my function configuration, now things get, get pretty interesting, right? If I go to my application settings, what I will have is, I have a connection string. It's my storage connection string. Notice how this is a Azure queue connection string. Okay? Great. Now if I look at my function, you see that I have a binding to the connection string and to a queue named uh, demo1. All right, so if we go to Azure now, and bear with me, it's easy to get lost uh, in this demo. I know a lot of uh, screen uh, 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 changes. So if I go to my storage account and look at my um, queues uh, in that storage account, I indeed have demo one. All right. And here's the demo one queue. So here's what happens. Using functions in Azure Stack, I bound my function to a public endpoint in Azure. My function will kick off every time a new item uh, comes to that, uh, to that queue. It will read the message, and then uh, we have that uh, uh, very small C-sharp code that writes data to the database, right? Is it the only way to do hybrid? Of course, no. I mentioned VPN, uh, uh, Express, rather are different ways. This is just a quick and dirty way. 
All right. Everything is almost ready except one thing. What is missing here? What is missing is how we ingest the files. So for that, flow. Okay. Uh, ahead of time, uh, I went and created a uh, flow that reads read files from a folder named Build Demos and write the file content to a queue. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here is. Let's create a file. Let's save this guy. Should have done this ahead of time. Uh, apologize for that. So uh, I will now move to the folder. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Remember, my function is stop because I want to ensure that uh, you, uh, you see it happening. Uh, that file will be ingested. After the file is ingested, it will uh, go through the queue. It will stay on the queue until uh, my function uh, picks up. And then when the fun function uh, picks up, what's going to happen is um, it will write to Azure Stack. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, enable the function. And before I do that, this is the data on my SQL database. I only have seven rows, right? So we'll go ahead and, um, and enable the function. And um, we should have the data um, flowing to SQL Server. All right. So what we will do now is uh, it will take a, a while for um, that uh, file to end up on the queue. So we will leave it running. And then um, after this happens, we will see uh, the data uh, flowing uh, to uh, the database. So I, I let this sit. Oh, that, that was actually quick. OK. Uh, clearly, my spelling uh, uh, um, skills are not the best, but uh, you see hello build, uh, which was uh, what we wrote in the file. Could this be IoT Hub? Yes. Would be a more uh, real uh, world example? Yeah. You know, uh, IoT is one of the key scenarios that we be engaging with customers. But you know what, why I like this, this scenario? I mean, I just wrote it, right? So I know that's, that's one thing. But besides that, you know, when we hear things like the Microsoft Graph, the different services, not only in Azure, but the different services within Microsoft, that's power, right? I use something as Flow. Flow is like the most end user friendly thing that exists. You can integrate Flow with Azure. Now think on the possibilities of the type of applications you can create, right? And this is real hybrid. So I have Azure doing the data ingestion. I have Azure Stack handling uh, 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 the on-prem and the integration with my uh, SQL database. Uh, so this was to give an idea of uh, how uh, a hybrid solution can be created. So let's uh, switch back to the slides and drill down a little bit more on some of those scenarios. First of all, hybrid has many means, right? That's uh, every time that I bring this slide up about developing hybrid solutions, uh, I realize that folks have uh, different interpretations of uh, what is re really hybrid. I do have um, basically three. Um, the way I, 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 I describe hybrid is uh, three ways: uh, matching resources in both clouds. What does that mean? Remember my first example, the consistency? The consistency example was exactly that. What I did, I did the deployment on both clouds. Okay. Uh, where can I use 
where that type of deployment is applicable. Uh, many instances, for example, you develop solutions for many customers. Some of those customers will get your solution and run in Azure. Some customers will ask you to run the same solution uh, on-prem. So you can get the same set of resources, templates, scripts, etc., and uh, 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 allow your customers to deploy. And then you can, in that scenario, you can leverage the Azure marketplace uh, uh, to basically uh, create a package that shows up on the marketplace, etc. Another example of uh, matching resources in both clouds is Dev and Test, right? Dev and Test across the globe, you have uh, many development teams working across the globe, uh, and you want to ensure that all of them have the latest uh, version of your application to test. So what you do is you can do testing in Azure, deploying your app for testing in Azure, and then uh, deploying uh, in Azure Stack. That's one ex couple of examples on matching resources on both clouds. Now, the things really get interesting when we look at the bottom two examples, right? When you have some type of connectivity uh, between Azure and Azure Stack. And some type of connectivity can be something simple as we did today. We leverage a uh, Azure queue endpoint. Or uh, something uh, more elaborate as VPN express route, which will, allows you, which will allow your workload to basically, if you have a VM running on a, v, on a VNet in Azure Stack that is VPN to Azure, that VM has access to the resources on uh, uh, the VNet in Azure and VC, vice versa, right? So uh, connectivity definitely enables you to spread your workloads around. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some uh, 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 more details on that. So my team has, uh, uh, spend, has been spending a lot of time uh, creating guidance for customers to create such hybrid uh, applications. Uh, and uh, as part of uh, everything we announced uh, uh, yesterday, I show you some of those things, you know, the Kubernetes, Service Fabric, et cetera. Um, we also announced uh, the launch of a hybrid pattern. So uh, if you go to the Azure Stack documentation, uh, you start to see guidance to create uh, uh, such patterns. Uh, and then let me talk uh, about some of those patterns uh, that are really key. So in terms of foundation, right, uh, what we have is the ability, the ability to provide connectivity. So again, connectivity to Azure, uh, between Azure and Azure Stack can be accomplished uh, through different ways. Uh, and w when you have that connectivity established, you can either leverage public endpoints or actually uh, uh, have the ability to go through uh, uh, both Azure and Azure Stack if you have VPN uh, and, uh, or Express Route. Now, it's very important uh, to highlight that uh, you still have different Azure resource managers, right? So the resources that you place in Azure Stack stay with Azure Stack the resources you place in Azure stay with Azure. Uh, Azure Resource Manager in uh, uh, Azure is a different instance than Azure Stack, which means that for you to orchestrate those resources, you need, uh, uh, you need to leverage uh, some kind of automation. That can be as simple as the example I demo uh, to you at the beginning of the session where you have a PowerShell script that does deployment both, uh, both places, or something more evolved as what I described on the right side of the screen, which is a CI CD pipeline that takes in consideration both clouds. Another announcement, I'm full of announcements, sorry. Uh, these are all news. Another announcement we did yesterday, the VSTS team released uh, the VSTS tests for Azure Stack, where you can deploy app service, you can deploy uh, ARM templates or perform uh, storage operations from VSTS. What that allows you to do is one single pipeline target, targeting the different clouds. And by the way, uh, I will have a list of the uh, related sessions, but tomorrow 
uh, Anjay from my team will be presenting on uh, development tools and DevOps. And one of the things he's going to show is how you can accomplish a single integrated pipeline uh, with Azure and Azure Stack. I highly recommend you attending that session. I will have the link for the session at, at the end of these slides. Good. So what else uh, 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 can be done, right? So when you have uh, uh, such uh, capability, you can uh, uh, do things like burst to Azure. Uh, this was a prototype we designed uh, with one of our customers. And uh, that particular customer uh, has a very um, short uh, time to acquire business for customers to actually use their service. There is a sign-up period that is very short uh, on the year, at the end of the year. Uh, and at the same time, uh, they uh, have to keep some data on-prem. Great. So uh, in this prototype we, we design with this particular customer, we leverage app service, we leverage uh, 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 the SQL resource provider as I, uh, I use in my demo as well, to build both the uh, user uh, experience through web apps and functions, uh, as well as the data tier, all on-prem. And then for the, uh, 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 the, the front-end tier, uh, what we do is at um, sign-up uh, times, those times of the year where uh, the amount of people accessing their front end uh, uh, is greater than the capacity that they have on-prem. Uh, they rely on um, uh, uh, app services in Azure. Now, how the traffic is redirected? That's another challenge that you, uh, you encounter on hybrid systems. There is something called Azure uh, Traffic Manager. So Azure Traffic Manager provides you an ingress point in Azure. And based on rules, it can redirect you, right? So then with a combination of Azure Traffic Manager and VPN, uh, this uh, uh, particular solution were able to burst to the cloud when needed. And uh, when traffic uh, uh, died down, traffic would get redirected to uh, uh, the, the front end uh, on the uh, internal network. And by the way, this is one of the patterns that we actually uh, have, do uh, have uh, documented and, and it is available on our documentation. So again, it's very powerful. And all of this glue by ACI CD pipeline, again, the ability of uh, 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 rev new versions, et cetera, uh, either in Azure or Azure Stack through a single process, in that particular case, of ESGS. You know, another example is uh, keeping data local. We just did that uh, on our simple demo, right? We uh, leveraged storage in Azure Stack, and uh, we did all the ingress uh, in Azure, and we kept data local. Uh, this is one of the scenarios I like the most. And uh, we've been working with customers uh, that uh, do a lot of um, AI and uh, IoT at the edge, either uh, plants in remote areas uh, or, uh, as I mentioned early uh, in the session, you know, drilling uh, uh, rigs in the middle of the ocean that need to score uh, data locally. So basically, uh, rely on Azure Stack to do the scoring while all the training aggregation happens in Azure. Uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, scenario, uh, we did a prototype uh, relying on uh, machine learning workbench in Azure to create your models and train your models. The output of that is actually a container. You can grab the container and uh, run in Azure Stack to do the scoring. So when we start looking at Azure Stack in such scenarios, it really uh, brings you uh, all the uh, advantages of having a, a common programming model and a model where you manage your solution uh, on-prem while relying on the large scale uh, of Azure. 
And uh, finally, uh, the other pattern I like to uh, uh, share with you is the, uh, the power of having uh, something like Azure Traffic Manager and leveraging Azure to do your ingress. So what you can do with that is, again, you ingre your ingress point can be anywhere in the world. And then through Azure uh, Traffic Manager, you can redirect to Azure Stack. Now, there is a caveat here, right? Uh, the caveat is for Traffic Manager to redirect traffic to Azure Stack, a uh, couple of things need to happen. You either have uh, your Azure Stack uh, with you know, inbound connectivity allowed, or you establish VPN. Right, uh, so you establish VPN to Azure, and then Traffic Manager can uh, redirect the traffic. So uh, this is very powerful because again, you can uh, have ingress point all over the world, Brazil, uh, Italy, uh, and then have have your processing uh, 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 in a specific place. Now, uh, not necessarily this uh, a scenario like th that uh, requires Traffic Manager and VPN. If you think about it. Uh, the demo uh, we saw with inge ingesting data in OneDrive, I do not rely on Traffic Manager, I do not re rely on, on Traffic Manager, but I did rely on the ability of uh, Azure services to have uh, you know, public endpoints. So uh, there are uh, different ways to accomplish hybrid. Uh, I think the, the great uh, thing is Azure Stack provides you the foundation to do that. So this is all great, uh, at least this is very exciting, exciting, and every day that I look, uh, I hear about customers designing these apps, uh, um, it's super exciting. Now, how about how we keep those apps uh, 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 secure? Or in other words, you know, how to take some of the security uh, worries out of your hands, right? How can we do that? With that said, uh, I have Filippo uh, to give an overview of uh, how Azure Stack uh, handles security and what it means for you developing those hybrid applications. Filippo, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Ricardo. I may come back. I'm not going away. <laughs> not yet. Well, at least they're awake. That's a good sign. Yes. Yes. Good job on that one. All right. Um, so, guys, one of the reasons why a lot of customers want to use Azure Stack, and they're actually using Azure Stack, is because they want to use the public cloud technologies. But they understand that sometimes going to the public cloud faces some constraints, like compliance constraints or security concerns that organization may or may, uh, or may not have. So you, Ricardo gave you a good example of uh, patterns that you can use to create your application, your hybrid application. For example, you keep your data local, because let's say you have a compliance regulation that prevents you from putting your customer PI data to the public cloud, right? And depending on which region, that can happen fairly often. So you have to keep the data local. But is your data stored in Azure Stack secure? If you have gone downstairs to the booth of Azure Stack, you will see Azure Stack comes as a physical hardware appliance. So can you trust it? Can you trust Azure Stack to create your application to put your very uh, most private data, most sensitive data, or your most sensitive application and logic and all the uh, good uh, um, intellectual property you have on Azure Stack? As a head of the Azure Stack security team, I will say yes, absolutely. But don't uh, take my word for it. So I'm going to walk you through the uh, Azure Stack security posture and the compliance for Azure Stack so that you will be able to make your decision whether Azure Stack is worth uh, your trust for when it comes to security and compliance. So this is the Azure Stack architecture. A lot of blue box, a lot of connection, cool stuff. Good news is you don't have to know it. Azure Stack architecture is internal, and internals are internal meaning that you have no control on that. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to configure it. You don't have to figure out which account talks with which component, the life cycle of that account, which network connection you have to have, how you encrypt the connection, so on and so forth. All of that is done for you. And so when you look at the Azure Stack security, or securing Azure Stack, the Azure Stack appliance comes secure, comes pre-hardened for you. 
And so we designed the security posture of Azure Stack following two principles, the hardened by default and assume breach, and I'll walk you through those. But one point I want to make it clear is that you or your Azure Stack operator will have to manage, for example, do the uh, security monitoring of Azure Stack. And then when it's really your responsibility is the tenant layer, your application, your workloads, or virtual machines. Those are your responsibility to secure them. Unfortunately, we, from the product group, we don't know what kind of application you're going to deploy on top of it. So we provide best practices, which are very similar, or we are the same as Azure. But at the end of the day, you are responsible to securing those applications. But the good news is you can focus on securing only that part. You don't have to spend your cycle. You don't have to spend your time trying to secure the infrastructure. The infrastructure come pre-hardened out of the box. I hope I'll be able to finish this presentation because this floor sounds squeaky. Um, so hardened by default, what does it mean? It means that instead of handing over your Azure Stack, and then here's the 600 or 1,000 pages manual of all the hardening practice you have to do, with, oops, too fast. With Azure Stack, it's ready to go. You don't have to do anything to secure it. I'm talking about the blue box uh, we saw earlier, the infrastructure. You don't have to do anything. It comes pre-secure, which means that uh, you don't have to spend cycle figuring out how all those components work together and how to secure them. And why we were able to do that is because in Azure Stack, we control anything. We, we design the hardware with our own partners. And design meaning we, we spec the hardware. So we decide exactly what firmware, what driver, which operating system, what the version, what, how everything is deployed, how everything is configured, and more so, how everything is managed. And by doing so, we have full control of the whole experience so that we can seal the infrastructure because we know exactly how it's going to be accessed. We know exactly the, what's going to go on inside the infrastructure. So they put us in a very strong position when it comes to security. Versus, for example, a Windows Server regular operating system, you have to deploy it, and then it can be any unbounded number of configuration between hardware and software drivers, application you run on top of it. In Azure Stack, we remove the complexity, we remove the uh, um, combination, and so we exactly know how it works. And so I said we control the whole end-to-end -end from the hardware up. So for the hardware, again, we co-design Azure Stack with our OEM partners. And one of the things that we enforce and we require our OEM partner to put in, inside every single Azure Stack node, it doesn't matter which OEM, it doesn't matter which region, are the TPM 2.0 chips. There are very few hardware out there, very few servers that you can buy today with, that come with TPM, uh, TPM 2.0. And that applies also if you buy Azure Stack in China, it applies also if you buy Azure Stack in Russia. They will come with uh, consistent uh, TPM 2.0 chips, they obviously will meet the regulation for that country. And then, of course, uh, CQ boot and UFI, but that's no news. That's fairly much standard, but we obviously have those as well. We also focus on reducing the attack surface, so the only, the only door opens are the one that we want to be open. So we started from a very hard, very tough uh, security baseline. And we basically picked the hardest we could possibly find, which is the US DOD, the Department of Defense, security baseline, which is called the DSA stick. So Azure Stack, or every Hyper-V host, and every virtual machine of the, the infrastructure comes with a military-grade security baseline. We remove all the components that we don't use from Windows and so on, so that the attack surface is reduced. And we also heavily leverage all the Windows security features. One that I want to mention here specifically is code integrity. Code integrity, which is part of the device guard uh, umbrella, is basically allows only the code that has been signed by the Microsoft or our OEMs to run in Azure Stack. So if one of those many components you saw in the architectural diagram a second ago gets compromised for any reason, the attacker will not be able to run Mimikatz, which is an exploit tool to steal credentials. They will not be able to run an arbitrary PowerShell or whatever other language you like, because none of those are signed by Microsoft. Therefore, they will not be able to execute. Not only that, if they try to, do, to execute them, it will be flagged 
as a, uh, with an alert. Therefore, your detection will be much faster. And just to give you an idea when we, come to, we talk about detection, the average industry for detection of a compromise is six months, 180 days. So your company could have been compromised five months ago, and you will well be within the average of the industry. So we, in Azure Stack, we are trying to push down the, the value as much as we can by leveraging the fact that we know exactly what it's supposed to run. So any software that is not designed to run in Azure Stack should not be run. And if somebody tries to run it, we flag it so you detect it right away. We also disable a lot of legacy protocol. Here I just mentioned a couple of them, SMB v1, SSL, and we're working to, the, uh, to do more. About the secrets, when you talk about secrets, encryption, and so on and so forth, there is a lot of overhead that comes with it. So first of all, this is where compliance also comes into play, because in Azure Stack, we, we understand that we go in a lot of regulated environments. We go into the financial industry. We, do into, we are going into the military. We're going to the government. We're going to insurance, health, healthcare providers. All of them are extremely heavily regulated. So therefore, we uh, try to address that as much as we could. So data rest encryption, if you take any standards out there, they all require data rest encryption. So it's enabled by default in Azure Stack through BitLocker. Network encryption, all those boxes that you saw in the architectural diagram, they all communicate with TLS 1.2 only. Therefore, you'd, all, the encryption inside, all the communication inside the infrastructure is encrypted. And we manage the certificates for encryption inside the infrastructure itself. There is a certificate authority, so all this uh, certificate rotation can happen automatically. We actually provided a script that you can run as much as you want, as frequently as you want, and you rotate all the secrets to the infrastructure. We also have one of the accounts, I mean, sorry, the majority of the accounts use what we call GMSA, Group Managed Services Account. They are just regular services account, but they are managed by the AD. There is an internal ID inside Azure Stack. Those accounts rotate password every 24 hours. That's the fastest that is supported by AD. So if an attacker compromises one of those accounts, they have 24 hours to exploit. After that, the password rotates automatically. Boom, they are out again. So that's sort of like the, a lot of the infrastructure security we put in place. And in terms of certificates and the other secrets, those that you have to run the, the script to rotate them. The, our North Star is to actually provide an autonomous rotation, meaning that we put it on a schedule internally and they rotate it as frequently as, as we can. So that even that overhead is gone. So you can focus and your team can focus only on, on providing the value, which is the applications, not so much uh, dealing with the infrastructure. In other words, we want to give you a cloud-like experience like you have in Azure. In Azure, you don't go in Azure and rotate the certificate of the Azure infrastructure. That's done by Microsoft. So we are trying to get there. Our North Star is to get to the same position with Azure Stack, but run inside your data center. The other principle we follow for Azure Stack is Assume Breach. Assume Breach is the, I would call it the modern or the new security approach, or the new approach to security that has been uh, basically put forward by the industry, and Microsoft is a champion in that. And what that basically says is, let's be honest. We can go be as good as we want and put as much security and hardening as we want, but if an attacker is well-funded enough and they have enough time, they will eventually get in. That's just the nature of the business. And so instead of just focusing on the hardening of the perimeter, which was the, the previous approach to security. You put very beefy firewall on front, and then you, you have a very strong uh, gate around, or your fence around your infrastructure. You actually do the same inside. So it's sort of like usually the typical uh, metaphor is you go from the castle with the huge t high walls to the city, where you have cameras at the door, you have locks at the door, uh, you have the police running around, and so on and so forth. So instead of having the security only outside, you also have, you have the security across the board. And so you focus not only in preventing the breach, but also in focus on the detection and mitigation. And the first enemy where we have to defeat 
when it comes to compromise is the admin privileges. I was at RSA conference two weeks ago. If any of you was there at the keynote, they, they gave us a very interesting number. 88% of the compromise today, or actually was of the last year, I think, happened through one known credential. 88%. That means credential that has been stolen, and guess which one is the easiest way to steal your credential? Phishing attacks. They have 33% success rate, making a little bit of easy math. Let's say I send you three emails. It's not exactly that, but let's uh, make it easier. Three emails, and I get your credential. So I'm three emails away from basically getting your domain admin credentials. And when I have that, I can do whatever I want in your infrastructure. I can steal any data that your application have installed. And at that point, you're done. So in Azure Stack, we simply remove that credential. You, as Azure Stack operator, we as either Microsoft or the OEM, we do not have any security, sorry, any domain admin credential or any admin credential for that matter. So if they steal your credential, they only they steal a user credential. So Azure Stack can be managed as a user account. It does not require a domain admin account. It does not require an admin account. They, as a matter of fact, uh, we call it the operator, the Azure Stack operator. We don't call it the Azure Stack admin. And this was possible because remember when I say we, we shrink down, we only enable the, the doors that we want, we only open those. Azure Stack only has three, uh, three doors. One is the portal. We have two portals in Azure Stack. We have the tenant portal, which is exactly the same as the one that uh, Ricardo showed you, which is uh, like the same as Azure. And then we have the admin portal, which is an admin experience we built for Azure Stack where you can manage your infrastructure. We well-defined interactions. So you, that's where you go, for example, to, create, uh, to syndicate with a marketplace, to build uh, quotas, to build offers, to bring more, down more services, to update Azure Stack. So if somebody steals your credential, yeah, they may be able to turn off Azure Stack and do a denial service attack that way. But sure enough, if you don't detect that somebody turned off your appliance, you have a bigger problem than the security itself, right? So, but that to give you an idea that that's where they go. If you don't want to use the portal, the admin portal, then you go to the ARM. And you can use PowerShell, command line, whatever you like, Python, you name it. Whatever you want, you can use that. That exposes the same actions, the same functionalities of the admin portal. As a matter of fact, the admin portal calls ARM to perform the action that exposes a point and click experience. And third, which is only for support cases, there is what we call the PowerShell, the, sorry, the privilege endpoint, which leverages uh, GIA, PowerShell GIA. And that is a white list of the uh, PowerShell library. So we only expose about 20 commandlets, which are only able to basically to get logs and perform some admin duties. And, through a, and via a two-factor auth between your operator and Microsoft, there is a way to sort of open the hood of Azure Stack, so get inside the infrastructure. But again, that's only through a ticket support, we, I mean, with support engineering. And we are on the call with you, and we will guide you through. And that is absolutely um, scripted, so uh, transcripted, so you will, have a, a, you will know everything that happens. Those are the only way to interact with Azure Stack. Everything else is sealed. We contain blast radius uh, by least privilege, the account level, I mentioned, at the network ACLing, we iterate every month, we make it better, we make it tighter. And we have role-based uh, interfaces. So all those components you saw earlier, they all communicate either through REST or through PowerShell GIA. And so that if one component gets compromised, they cannot do a WMI call and perform any arbitrary action they want. And again, if one account got compromised, there is no logging in into Hyper-V manager or cluster manager or server manager, whatever you like. There is only those three endpoints that I mentioned earlier. Auditing, big deal when it comes to security and monitoring. We centrally uh, collect all the audits and we pre-configure your stack to provide all the audits you need. And we have a syslog client, we're actually delivering next month, uh, that it will make it very simple to integrate with the, any monitoring platform in the market. 
So that was for security. Hopefully I was able to give you some idea of what we had done for Azure Stack. For compliance, one of the feedback was from customer, compliance paperwork, number one pay, uh, headache to go to production. Obviously for regulated environments. So what we did in Azure Stack, since again, we control the hardware and software and the entire infrastructure, we call up uh, an independent auditing firm to do a formal assessment of Azure Stack for PCI, payment card industry. So if you use Visa, MasterCard, American Express in your application or anything else related to that, you have to be PCI compliant. We have all the documentation on how Azure Stack infra infrastructure meets the PCI, the applicable PCI requirements. We also, uh, you blocked me. Did I block you? Yeah, can you give me a one click? There you go. Um, it's my last slide, is so I'm good. Uh, so the last, second thing we did is we pre-filled the uh, Cloud Security Alliance Cloud Control Metrics, which is a framework, a, a meta mapping of to about 30 different international standards, which include HIPAA, healthcare industry, FedRAM, if you want to be a service provider for the US Gov, which is also one of the most comprehensive uh, cloud provider standards out there, and ISO 27001. Those are just, there are 30 more in there. So this documentation, both the PCI and the Cloud Secure Alliance CCM metrics, you can download it for free uh, from the Service Trust portal. And the link is here on the slide. I last comment I want to make, just want to make it clear, we are not certifying Azure Stack for these standards. This is a, this is a difference between Azure and Azure Stack. In Azure, Microsoft owns and operates Azure. Therefore, we can address and we can meet the controls that are related to people and processes. A lot of these standards have a lot of controls related to people and processes. In Azure Stack, you or your customer own and operate Azure Stack. Therefore, they have to certify Azure Stack. What we have done is we have done a formal assessment and we provide all the documentation so to jumpstart your certification process on how Azure Stack meets the applicable control related to the Azure Stack infrastructure, which usually falls into the technology piece. Okay? So you, but for companies that are already regulated, people and process are already done because it's the same across all the application they have. So the real, the, uh, the real delta is gonna be the application you develop. And that's, it doesn't matter where you run, you will always have the delta. And with this, I think we are over time. So uh, I want to thank you for your attention. I, th I hope this was interesting. And we are here for questions until they kick us out. Otherwise, we'll take it from outside. Thank you.